Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to have you here. I hope you're having a great day. I know it's been about six months since I've put out a video or longer, um, but there was a lot going on personally that I just could not um, focus on making videos. I had to focus on other things. Um, I lost inspiration, so I didn't know what to cook you guys anymore. And honestly, I haven't been doing that much in the way of experimental cooking for a while. So I want to get back into it. So today we are going to be making a, a meal out of a Betty Crocker cookbook from the early 60s. This is called Family Goulash and I'm going to make some modifications to it to fit keto but I hope you like this recipe so stay tuned. All right, here's the cookbook. <laughs> As you can see, it's very well loved. And um, this is the recipe that we're gonna be using right here. And if you see me put my glasses on, it's just to make sure that I'm reading everything correctly since I've not made this before. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn you down so you can see my, um, my pan and see what we're doing. All right, so here's my pan, and the recipe calls for one pound of ground beef. And you know, I'm lazy, and I didn't want to. I already had this in the freezer, so why not use it? These are quarter pound burgers, so I know that four of them equal one pound of meat. So if you have hamburgers and or turkey burgers in your freezer, and you want to make this, you can use those instead of having to buy. A special thing of meat. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and turn this on and I'm gonna use my creep in it reel because it's almost uh, Halloween. And when I come back, the ground beef, oh, and I almost forgot, ooh, that's a piece of paper. Uh, I almost forgot to this, we're gonna also add, I did one quarter of a whole onion. I know I never use onion and I've over the last six months have been able to add in some foods back into my diet. So we're gonna try this today and, and see if it'll keep my allergies or not. So come back when I'm done. All right, we are back. And as you can see, the ground beef is fully cooked. The onions are starting to look translucent. So I'm gonna change this recipe up a little bit this was supposed to be done on the stove top, but I'm gonna do it in my crock pot. So I'm gonna transfer this over to my crock pot that's been lined with a liner because it just makes cleanup easier, guys. And then we'll continue to put the rest of the ingredients in here. Now, if I wanted to, I could leave um, all of that juice in and just pour it all in there, <laughs> however, I'm just not going to do that today. I'm going to try and follow the recipe as much as I can, which said to drain the fat. So that's what I did. All right. So bear with me just a moment while I get things moved around a little. All right. So as you can see, I've got the ground beef with onion in the crock pot. And to this crock pot, I am going to add some of what they call for and not of some stuff. So it calls for two cups of sliced celery. It calls for a jar of sliced onions and I, or excuse me, sliced mushrooms. And I can't have mushrooms. I'm allergic to mushrooms. So I'm going to substitute. Here's my two cups of chopped celery and I'm going to substitute carrots instead of the mushrooms. I know it's not quite the recipe, but I'm doing what I can guys. Okay. And hold on just a minute. I forgot my measuring cup. All right. So it calls for um, half a cup of ketchup. Today I'm going to be using Heinz no sugar added ketchup. And I'm sure this isn't a traditional goulash because it is using ketchup. However, you know, it's just it's just a recipe. It doesn't say it's traditional, but it works. So we're gonna add that in. 
and it calls for a 14 and a half ounce can of tomatoes. Um, and it didn't really specify what kind of tomatoes. So I got these rolled gold crushed tomatoes. Now this is a 20, 28 ounce can, so I'm only going to use half of it. There we go. And then um, I'm going to mix it up and we're going to let it cook in the crock pot. And I'm going to say for about four and a half hours, four or so hours. Now, the original recipe said to add the mushrooms with the juice, and because I didn't add mushrooms, I'm gonna actually add a little bit of homemade uh, chicken broth, just to make sure that it's got enough liquid to cook the way it needs to. So I guess I put in about half a cup to a cup, and see how loose that's looking? That's looking much better. Now the other thing that it called for was four ounces of fine noodles. But of course, we're not going to use noodles. So I got myself a spaghetti squash. I'm going to cut this up in half. I'm going to cook it in the oven while this is in the crock pot cooking. And then once it's ready to be plated for dinner, I'll bring you back. All right, I'm back. It has been about four hours. I had the uh, crock pot going um on low for one hour and then the last three hours it's been on high and it smells amazing i also put the um the spaghetti squash in the oven earlier so i've got that done so i'm going to go ahead and show you how i'm going two different ways to plate this up okay so let me go ahead and turn this back down all right so for starters, here's our lovely goulash. Oh, it smells so good. You guys have no idea. And then over here, we have our squash. Now this is spaghetti squash and it is done. You can tell because of how easily it comes apart, right? So you just do this and you pull all the little threads. And I'll tell you what, Spaghetti squash is not my favorite. I prefer butternut or acorn. So every year I want to try this because I want to like it and then I end up not liking the texture of it. But I'm going to try again because I'm trying to grow. Okay, so there's two ways that you can do this. The first way is to just go ahead and take it and put it in your, in your bowl or plate or whatever, and then add the goulash over the top. I'm, however, going to take this and I'm going to put it in here. The original recipe called for the uh, fine noodles to go in and cook with everything for 30 to 45 minutes after they were cooked. And I was really confused about that because you know, there is just no way um, those noodles would be any good after 45 minutes. However, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this. My biggest thing with spaghetti squash is the texture, that it's all, always crunchy and, and the like. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here. And then I'm gonna let it go for another half an hour on high, just to kind of see what happens. Um, if the texture of them improves or not, but overall that looks really, really good. And I will tell you, it took me at least a good hour and a half to figure out I forgot to put in the salt and pepper. And as you can see, I also added a couple of bay leaves because I like that flavor. Um, so this is going to be it. That's pretty much the finished product. Um, let me go ahead and plate that up for you though. Oof. looks good here we go now let me go ahead and turn you around and turn you up all right and let's try this oh I hope it's good 
trying. <laughs> Not trying very much, am I? Okay, so of course the noodles are crunchy as I expected. The flavor is almost a little sweet. We've decided it tastes like, or it smells like barbecue, you know? Um, but I think it's not bad. I think it's not bad at all. I actually really like the texture of this versus putting it in the bowl and putting the stuff on top. I think I've had problems with that in the past where the texture was just too much for me. But putting it into the goulash like this isn't, isn't that bad at all. So I'm gonna call this a hit. I'll let my husband try it and uh, let you know in the description down below what he thought of it. But I hope you guys liked this video today. I hope that uh, if you try that, you let me know how it turned out for you. I also want to um, thank you for spending this time with me. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you like to see more vintage recipes, comment down below some of your vintage recipes that you love that you would love for me to try to make keto. Don't forget, be the good in the world that you'd like to see, but most of all, be good to you. All right. We'll talk to you later and I hope you have a great rest of the day.